Hey, what's up guys, Aaron over here, and welcome back to some more F1 2021 gameplay. And today, this video is all about career mode and the single player experiences. We uploaded a video on my very first ever race laps on this game, and now it's time to talk in detail about different career modes, including my team driver career mode, the new two-player co-op career, and also the story mode, Breaking Point. There's gonna be some gameplay in this first part of the video that'll help me illustrate some of these points that I'm talking about, and then the rest of the video will just be some random gameplay from this preview build whilst I talk to you guys and give you the full details that are very, very juicy about these various new features in each of these modes, especially when it comes to the co-op career and breaking point, obviously completely brand new modes. I'm only allowed to make a 15 minute video from these preview videos, so there's going to be a lot of information to rattle through. I'm going to put some timestamps in the description so you can go to a certain part of the video for a certain mode or feature that you want to kind of check out and hear about. So we're going to start things off with career customization, and I truly think that these set of options are game changing, especially for things like my team career mode. These, in my opinion, are game changers. So the first small setting, which you may have seen in other gameplay videos, is a safety car frequency option. Previously in the F1 game, we had the option of having the safety car simply on or off for a Grand Prix or career mode that you were doing. Now we get off, reduce, standard, and increase. This is a great new setting on the game because sometimes career mode to career mode saves. Some people complain that they don't get enough safety cars and others that they get too much. So now, depending on how you feel it's going in your career season, you can change that from high to standard to low and hopefully either see more or less of the safety car. This is quite a small option in general gameplay, but I missed out in the first video. But now we're going to come to the actual career specific settings that you can now have on F1 2021. And for me, the best way to describe these settings are it's effectively the F1 games version of FIFA sliders. So in the FIFA games for the last few years, they've had these slider settings that allow you to customize certain kind of aspects of the actual gameplay itself, the speed of the play and etc, etc. So now in the F1 2021 game for career mode we have a bunch of options not sliders but some menu options that we can change. So if you look carefully on screen the first two are meet the press and R&D management. So this is for the interviews you get with Claire previously on F1 2020. I don't know if Claire's returning. I assume she is maybe and an R&D management. You'll turn that off if you want the computer to do it. So if you're a casual player you don't really get your head around R&D. Well you can get well now you can well now you can play well now you can play career mode and my team to its fullest extent while having the AI do all that stuff for you in my team and also into later seasons those of you like me that play into you know season eight for example of my team career the interviews get pretty repetitive and a little bit boring after kind of the first five four seasons really so now we can turn those off when we want to when the time is appropriate but now the next set of settings down the list these are I think and I don't think I'm exaggerating game changing options in terms of allowing those of us who play the game quite thoroughly to actually have a more challenging and enjoyable experience long term into the heart of the game cycle. I'm talking like, you know, past seasons four and five, because now we can change the team acclaim rate, the acclaim rate itself for the drivers, the resource rates for R&D, and also the rate that you earn cash for the player and the AI. So you can reduce the rate that you, the player, gain acclaim level for your team, which obviously affects, you know, how quickly you can then gain better sponsors with more money obviously attached to them. The acclaim rate of yourself as a player you can reduce. So if you're playing driver career mode that will you know make it harder for you to move to a top team. The resource level, the R&D rate, basically you earn less resource points, makes it harder to upgrade the car. And then the cash rate. Earning less cash means obviously you can't spend as much money or get enough money to buy certain HQ facility upgrades and therefore improve your team, improve your upgrades, the speed they come at. And you can change the rate of those for not only you the player but also the AI and kind of have an on purpose imbalance towards the AI to help them kind of beat you essentially when it gets a bit too easy like it kind of does when you get past like seasons four basically. And then also at the bottom of this menu, finally finally after so many years and games of us asking for this, we have finally got mechanical failures and faults for the player. This is literally something I've been mentioning for the last year in terms of just give us the option 
option as a hardcore player to turn on fault frequency. If you turn it on to high, you can get technical faults, which will be little niggles that you have to kind of drive with, and then you can get full-on mechanical issues that make you retire from the race. So finally, we could get a random retirement for ourselves. You know, that unfortunate thing the AI get, the unfortunate thing that real-life F1 drivers sometimes get, where the car just simply gives up and you have to retire. And so I'm finally hoping over the course of a few seasons, no longer there's going to be that imbalance of getting so much good luck when your AI rivals retire with a random failure and you can never get that. Now, you could possibly get that. Now, swiftly moving on to the new R&D structure in the menus for my team career mode and also driver career. So there's no longer a classic R&D skill tree. We've now got these kind of newer graphics and UI, which in my opinion are, re are much nicer, especially for content creators, but just in general are much nicer. You can see the individual parts that go into these F1 cars illustrated on screen. Before you buy the upgrades, you've got them kind of in a 3D mesh, like a CAD design mesh. And then once you've actually upgraded them, they get colored in and filled in and you can see the part as it would be, you know, in real life. Underneath the skin of this menu, it's essentially still the same sort of R&D system where there are different kind of avenues to go about. But instead of showing you on a skill tree, it's going to present it in this kind of tabled manner. And you can see an overview there in the bottom right, which is almost like one of those kind of uh, pentagon kind of shapes where it kind of shows you uh, where your strengths are in the car and a kind of nice illustration, I guess. Onto another part of the career mode that has been refined and changed are the practice sessions. So now in the practice session, we've got these development boosters, which are going to be obtained by completing secondary objectives to gain reductions in dev costs and kind of focusing on driving down the costs of the R&D path that you're doing. So they're kind of not the main objectives you do with the practice programs, but they're secondary things you can be doing whilst doing the main program. And if you focus on actually doing those simultaneously, you can then drive down the costs of your entire R&D and help kind of shift where you're going quicker. There's also a completely new feature and time management mini game, which is music to my ears, because this is going to be really useful for those of us that play career mode partially two, three seasons where practice gets very monotonous and just a little bit bland. Unfortunately for this part, in the build I have of F1 2021, uh, I'm unable to illustrate it on screen, but just imagine on the bottom of this practice screen, we'll have like a little mini bar of time and we have to try and slot in various practice programs we want to do within this one bar and we can choose to actually reduce the time we try and do them in and risk essentially trying to cram in too much into what a one one hour session so if you try and cram in too much sometimes you may not get it all done and you won't get all the kind of practice points the resource points that you want to get from the session vice versa you can play it safe and you can kind of give enough time or more time than you need to do certain sessions but I think it's really good with this mini game there's actually a risk versus reward so it's not just a guaranteed amount of R&D points there is going to be a little bit of jeopardy involved in that now moving on to some my team specific career mode features we've got new department events which were teased with at the announcement now we've got some further details we can be challenged by team critical department events in my team so you're making key decisions for your team's success an example that Lee Mather gave us in a preview event was staff burnout, how that affects the morale of departments and therefore the speed of upgrades and if they come in or fail. Uh, similarly, also simulator and uh, maybe has issues. It needs a software update that's got a cost attached to it. You can choose to upgrade it or not. You may not be able to afford it. And so that has a knock-on effect for the smoothness of the running of your team and will actually impact it long-term if you keep making these decisions that maybe impact it negatively or vice versa positively, of course, as well. I also saw during this presentation we're being given that there was also an extra screen maybe for more training with your teammate and it showed us an option of you know, choosing between do you want to train his pace or awareness so that will also be part of the department events so you can really fine tune how you improve your teammate specifically and there's going to be better ways to present it uh, versus kind of just the email system you get kind of now. Now moving on to the focus driver stat the extra driver stat that we know as coming to the F1 2021 AI this is a measure of driver readiness and motivation it's going to be impacted by the team activities you put your teammate through performance on track that is the car improving for example for them are they happy with it and also the meet the press responses that you give as a team boss this is a stat that is purely affected by in-game stuff so all the other stats we've seen in f1 2020 have been affected and either boosted or nerfed by you know post-launch game patches that are affected by the real life you know drivers how they're doing you know the f1 code masters they patch in you know the stats and change them and those actually 
actually affected our career modes if you wanted to apply them. But the focus driver stat, that is purely tied to your own personal experience and how those drivers do out on track. That's obviously not just for your teammate as well, it's for the other AI drivers you're racing against. They all have different focus levels in their own individual teams. And a more focused driver basically will be able to max out their ability. So you're going to want to try and focus uh, ironically on the focus driver stat and try and get that as high as you can because then overall that driver will perform better for you and to the, the, the best of his ability. A quick note on customization there are now going to be driver personal stickers which we can stick on the inside of the halo so viewable from like the T-cam and cockpit view so that's kind of nice especially for those of you on console that can't modify the game. We've also got the victory radio and there was more kind of uh, detail on that essentially shouting out your team and fans as you take the win Lima, the kind of alluded to it, mimics some iconic driver shouts and kind of didn't say it explicitly, but kind of hinted at things like, you know, Sebastian Vettel's old cry from Ferrari, Grazie Ragazzi. So maybe we could get those actual phrases in there to maybe use, but it's not confirmed yet. Right, so moving on to the new game modes then when it comes to career mode. So the two-player career, there's actually two different versions of the two-player pl player career that you can do. You can do contracts mode, which is race Racing against your friend, competing for contracts, the best seat in Formula 1. In this mode, you can actually build a claim and fight for contracts like you would do in the normal single player career and my team. Or you can play two player career mode in the co-op mode. So you work together to become a championship winning team. Obviously in that case, you're not actually competing against each other for contracts and a claim because you're in the same team and are meant to just be working together. But this career is essentially the exact same driver career single player experience but just with a friend you can engage with rivals contracts R&D vehicle management systems and meet the press and a nice bonus obviously because people are sometimes busy the career owner the one who makes it they can swap out the friend that you're doing it with if needed halfway through the season as well and I believe Lee kind of kind of half confirmed that there are going to be at least a couple of save slots you can do so you can do multiple two career two player career modes with different people the real season starts so this is another new game mode where you can jump into the season from a specific part of the real life F1 season and kind of essentially rewrite your own history you inherit their season points for the drivers and the, the constructor standings and also the game will try and simulate R&D up to that point as well so you're not just jumping in kind of you know without any R&D being done you can then play on from there with some R&D having been done and I think continue to do so and continue on your own accord and now finally the home stretch the last part of this video is all going to be about bringing Breaking Point, the new story mode experience. Now, we have no gameplay from this because, for obvious reasons, Lee Madder told us that they want to keep it, you know, secret. It's a very cool experience, and they want everyone to experience it for the first time for themselves. But I've got a lot of nice details for what you can expect. So, this new story mode experience, they've actually got professional writers that have been involved with this that have worked for, like, Darren Brown. So, it's going to be a pretty sick story, hopefully. And they actually outsource the animation for the cutscenes and CGI stuff to a different company for visuals so it's nothing like the in-game engine cutscenes you get in my team for example and such and such you got a small snippet preview on these cutscenes in this preview presentation and I just I, I hope I can get across to you with my, my voice that it was sick it looked unreal like properly good trailer level kind of you know those CGI trailers you know games do and they just don't look like that in the game well because it's all pre-rendered cutscenes. They can have that in the story. The story mode is going to be set across three different seasons. F2 2019 into F1 2020 and then F1 2021. You're going to start off the story as Aiden Jackson, a young up-and-comer, F2 into F1 2020 and then you're going to see him graduate into a fully fledged F1 driver in F1 2021 on the grid. You've also got another main character, Casper Aikerman. He's a more mature driver at the end of his career fighting with the demons whether he should still be in the sport and we've got other characters and relationships that go along with that like team bosses and whatnot we've even got like Casper Aikerman's wife and child Aiden's mum within the story mode and experience we've been told there's going to be like a new driver room location with social media and news feed phone calls and emails and such and there's going to be story specific meet the press interactions and bespoke broadcast commentary and finally some very juicy details there is going to be five players 
selectable teams. That include Racing Point, which obviously become Aston Martin in 2021, Alpha Tauri, Alpha Romeo, Haas, and William. And in the presentation, we asked Lee Madak kind of how long this story mode was going to be, because obviously the F2 one in F1 2019 was very, very short. I finished it in under like an hour, basically. We're told it's going to be about six or six or so hours playtime, which I think personally is really, really solid. Because you've got to remember, Breaking Point, it's not like a normal single player game where Breaking Point is the main, you know, uh, you know, bread and butter of the game. It's kind of this extra thing we're getting on top of my team, driver career mode, two player career mode. It's going to get a lot of casual fans into the F1 game, even more so because it's a cool cinematic experience that they get to play with Formula 1. But that is it then, a very jam-packed video on F1 2021, all things career mode and single player modes. Obviously, there was also the two player mode in there as well. If you guys did enjoy the video, hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you are new around here, then do get subscribed and there will be a third F1 2021 gameplay video on the way on Sunday. Till then, guys, hope you enjoyed today. Goodbye.